Solomon Bashan, a school named after a student martyr, who was hung on the 6th April 1979. And we are the future of this nation. We are the brides of the second generation. So help us to be the best that we can be, faithful and good citizens of this democracy. Amen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What we just did is the part of our school prayer. Solomon Masangu is situated in Newton Hague in Guanobuche in Eastern Cape. Over the past three years, our metric results kept on increasing from 2012 and we achieved 29% and improved by 72% in 2014. Well, the good question is, how did we do that? Yes. Our school has a principal whose leadership is second to none, and he instilled discipline with the, par with the parents, the teachers, and the learners. Moving further, this is, our, this is the staff of our school, and they are always ready to teach. Well, our school has a good working relationship with parents, learners, and educators, just like an African traditional three-legged pot, because all three legs are important for stability. Ladies and gentlemen, since our school is a top performing in our area, we wanted to maintain that, and that is where we as the YCAP team drew the line by eliminating the biggest problem that we face in our school, and that is late coming. Thanks, Pamela. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is our school map. Since late coming is the issue that we are facing, gates were our hotspots. <clears throat> gates were our hotspots. <clears throat> I'll be talking about on how we identify the problem late coming. It is because late coming impacts the whole school and it's a challenge to us. Unlike teenage pregnancy, substance unlike teenage pregnancy and substance abuse, because we're a disciplined school. We do not have such problems. Late coming in our school results in various things such as disturbance in class that takes away valuable teaching time, disrespectful attitude from the latecomers to the teachers. As a team, we targeted ourselves to eliminate late coming. As the project continues, teachers are no longer getting disrespectful at attitude from the latecomers because learners who are late are not allowed at the gate to enter at the gates after 8 a.m. Disturbance in class no longer occurs because we have drastically decreased late coming. Thank you, Yanda. <clears throat> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be talking about the processes and procedures involved in our research. Our research was based on values which are respect, responsibility, courage, honesty, and perseverance. As we started the project, the stakeholders were informed during special presentations that we organized from the, for them. The methods of the research were as follows. We created questionnaires and handed them out to our school security guards, teachers, learners, parents, and of course the police. Processes involved in capturing the data we had to split into two groups and had to be at two of our school gate, the main gate and the side gate, to register the latecomers. The latecomers had to write down their names and class and their reasons for being late. Oh, trust me, some of them, they had invalid excuses such as, I woke up late, or I was looking for my school shoes. So, learners who came in after 8 a.m. were sent home to bring their parents. Well, the majority didn't bring their parents because they were afraid of their parents from finding out that they have been missing classes lately. At the end, we collected data. The data collected was used to draw graphs and provide information for the teachers so that they can know the repeated latecomers in their classes. Then, me, myself, and my, and my teammates, we believe that all of us should be punctual because one thing we cannot recycle is the wasted time. And if we cannot be on time, then let's rather be early. Thank you. Thank you, Mangava. Greetings to you all, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be covering how we reviewed and revised our actions. As Mangava have said, learners who were late and brought in their parents were referred to Mrs. Carson, our school social worker, who had a counseling session with them. In the counseling session with Mrs. Carson, she discussed, she discussed the following. 
She explains to the parent the code of conduct of our school, which states that the school starts at 20 to 8, and the first period starts at 8 a.m., which means the gates are being closed, and no learner is, is allowed to enter the school unless there is a parent. She discusses the reasons given by the learner for being late, and together, both the parent and the learner works to find a permanent solution in solving the problems. She, she, she highlights values such as respect, responsibility, honest, acceptance, courage, and perseverance, which will help the learner to grow and develop in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, remember that it is the learner's responsibility to be in school early. Well, we wouldn't be where we are today if we didn't persevere because horrible things were said to us by learners as we registered them at the gates, which made us think of quitting, but perseverance was one of our team's value. So, as a team, we had to stand strong and persevere through all the obstacles we faced. Mrs. Kasi and Ms. Mr. Mtengwane, our school's principal, helped us a lot in understanding their values. Through the project, we have success stories as well. For example, a for a year, a learner has been not communicating with his mother and was not fed. His mother did not provide bedding for him and did not buy clothes for him. After the counseling session, his mother deci decided that he should take care of his child because he had the right to, to education, support, and she had the responsibility for taking care of her child. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Before we start, since late coming affected everyone in our school, we had, we had to have everybody's buy-in in order to fully eliminate it. That's why we did presentations for teachers, parents, and learners. We did presentations for the learners by doing class visits for every class in our school. Awareness. We conducted the media, the Weekend Post newspaper, and SAPC. And they were happy to cover our project because it was a positive project because we as the youth were taking part in making a difference. This, this picture was taken in January when we experienced a high number of latecomers because it was the beginning of the year and there were new learners in our school. So we first had to start by doing presentations for those learners, explaining the benefits they could have if they came in early. That is, they would have more time, they would have more time to relax and prepare for the first period. And also, there is little chance of them forgetting pens and books because they were rushing. In February, we had already decreased late coming in our school by 31%, which shows that the solution that we have implemented is effective. And in March, since we were writing exams, we couldn't register everybody who came in in the gates since we were writing in different times. But even so, the late coming rate in our school didn't increase. In May, we had already achieved over 87% in the late coming de decrease in our school, which shows that we are near to our aim, which is 100%, and that means zero late comers in, at, at the gates every morning. This graph shows the number of late comers starting from January to May, and since we couldn't write every day of the month, we took the average number we would get on the Mondays of each month, Tuesdays. So you can clearly see the decrease starting from February to May. We, we as the YCAP team sat down and discussed as to how we're going to sustain our project. We came up with the idea of starting a club. We built this club on top of values that are punctuality, respect, responsibility, responsibility, perseverance. Punctuality because the reason that we started this club is because of our YCAP project, which was about late coming. And respect because most of the time it will be fellow learners who are teaching. We as the YCAP team are responsible for organizing tutors for these classes. When we were organizing tutors, we took the slogan into consideration. Each one, teach one, and learners learn best from other learners. Which is why we worked with the teachers to identify top performing learners in grades 11 and 12. The tutors help learners with, the, with homeworks that they didn't understand and also cover topics that the teachers haven't covered yet. So that, when the learner, well, so that when the teacher is covering those topics, the learners already have an idea. The learners already have an idea and can be more interactive in class with the teacher. 
This is a picture of an uh, early bird class in progress. We usually have around seven classes each day with different tutors. And now we have at least 19 members in grades 8, 9 and 10. Since the project is aimed, since the club is aimed for them, since that's where we get most of our latecomers, but we hope to introduce it to the higher grades in the future. We have a school library, but it is not resourced. So if we win the grand prize, we are going to buy school books for our library. And just like latecoming affects everyone in the school, the, li the library will be a benefit to everyone in the school. And reading is a fundamental, is a fundamental skill in learner development. Thank you. How has the YCAP project impacted the school? The YCAP project impacted our school very positively in the sense that it brought uh, a new dimension. Because previously we used to have learners who were late and could not get to the reasons as to why they were late. Because there are many of them. But now, the very important thing is that it is the initiative of the learners, of the learners. And it makes a difference because learners now are aware of the negative part of the coming. What was your response to the latecomers? My response to the latecomers are always to them, show them that respect and discipline goes a long way. If they don't respect themselves, and they don't respect me, they will come late to class and they are gonna miss out with the lessons that are being taught. So I always tell them that they should always come to school early so that they get everything that is taught at school. Thank you so much for Ladies and gentlemen, what we're about to do is a play to show you how disturbing a latecomer is in class. <clears throat> Good morning, class. I'll be writing some notes for your homework, so please copy. What's all that noise about? You know you're late and you're making a noise in my class. Please find a chance to sit down. See, viewer, I want my homework. What? This is not your work. I've already signed this. Where is my homework, Sivir? You didn't bother gathering to research for my homework. So please go sit down. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Can I say something to Sivir? Severe from the minute you are coming down the hall, you are making noise. That means you are disturbing other classes. And when you came into this class, you disrespected our teacher and you bullied this girl off her chair. Spot on. Spot on, Severe, that's exactly what she did. When you're alone, you gotta be a responsible lane. achieved 100% uh, school on time, what's your next goal as YCAP? To improve the marks because we've already started in making the early bed classes. The early bed classes encourage learners to come in early and if they are there by 7 o'clock in the morning, they are sure to be early for the first period. So now we are focusing on higher marks. Did you ever feel intimidated 
by any of the, when you guys were standing at the gate and um, taking down notes of who was coming late? I mean, you're only grade 10s. There are a lot of um, children older than you. Um, how did you feel about doing that? As we registered learners at the gates, horrible things were said to us and threats were said to us by few learners, but we didn't just leave them. Our principal had to deal with them. And yes, as a team, we had to persevere because we believe in values. So we, we had to just be one and... Um, as you said that some late comers were sent home, I would like to know that because you sent them home and they did not bring their parents back, what happened to them as their right to basic education was infringed upon? What happened to them? I'd like thank, to know that. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Uh, as Magnape said, learners who were late were sent home to fetch their parents. As she said that uh, the majority of learners did not bring in their parents because they were afraid. But the thing is, every learner who was sent home to bring back their parents had a choice to bring back their parents. So if they had a choice to decide not to bring their parents, but the thing is, the, the following morning, they will make sure that they come to school early, and to those who brought in their parents, we, we cancelled them. At the very same day, we allowed to attend classes. If they came in early the following day, we wouldn't have a problem with them. But the, the, most prob the problem that we face most is when Alena is a serial lead karma. That means there's a problem behind that. They have a deep rooted problem to that, and that's why they are referred to the counselling with Ms. Carson. To, solve, to permanently solve that. Thank you. My question is related to that. Um, what did you find was the most common cause of late coming? Was it purely like a disrespect thing or were there more integrated problems like transport and how did you address those? I, I know you used the school council but was there any other ways that you addressed them? The reason that we got the most was I woke up late which just, mean that, which just means that they didn't prepare earlier so uh, it's not a valid reason.